Hello folks, and welcome to the second part of the most violent tornadoes that have ever happened in the United States. Of course, part one was before this, total of five parts in this series. We already looked at four tornadoes in the last video, we are going to be looking over another four in this one, plus honorable mentions, just like last time. Some disclaimers before we get into those honorable mentions, is that this is going over exclusively tornadoes that have happened in the US. There is simply an unparalleled amount of information regarding most uh, violent tornadoes that have happened in the U.S. There is simply just a lot more information compared to other violent tornadoes around the rest of the world. Granted, especially early in tornado documentation, that's not really saying too much. So we are looking over more or less well before the 19, or well after, sorry, the 1950s. Also. This is not a comprehensive list. There have been close to 70 violent tornadoes, that meaning F5s and DF5s combined in the US. We are looking over just 20 in this series. Again, four in the previous video and four in the next one. Four in the next one, four in the next one after that, four in this one, you know, five videos, five times 420. All right, folks. Our honorable mentions, we are looking at the DePaul, Indiana F5 that happened on the infamous super outbreak day of April 3rd, 1974. This tornado is estimated to have had wind speeds of 206 to 260 miles per hour. That is the entirety of the F5 wind scale, by the way, so not really a good estimate there. That is equal to 331 to 418 kilometers per hour. The Sailor Park, Ohio F5 happening on the same day is also estimated to have had that same wind speed, and so is the first of the Tanner, Alabama tornadoes. I am not including the second Tanner, Alabama tornado here that happened just, what, like two hours later after that, as the damage was indistinguishable. That is not my own words. So... For that reason, I am going to leave that out of our honorable mentions here. I am going to get flack for this one, and I'm okay with that. I do not consider the Gerald, Texas tornado as one of the strongest tornadoes ever. I am still at least going to honorably mention it. It having wind speeds roughly estimated on the lower end of 155 miles per hour, all the way up to 261 or even more miles per hour. That is 249 to 420 kilometers per hour. There are some reasons why I believe the Gerald F5 is not as strong as people think. And the first and foremost is that it was stationary for minutes on end on a subdivision. And we see worse damage with tornadoes that were over in the same, the same area, you know, a same trek of neighborhood for much less than that, like 15, 30, 45 seconds compared to three, four, five minutes. So there's a big thing there. Tornadoes create twisting, so shearing, uplifting winds, something that is uh, forcing all three axes of stress on a building they are going to fail unless they are the strongest out there. And when you have those shearing, uplifting winds on a building for minutes on end that is not meant to withstand those for minutes on end, you're not going to see it anymore. And also, your the debris isn't going to be there anymore either. So that that is my opinion, most hopefully backed up by enough fact and with other examples that we'll see later on that I can hopefully partially convince you why I think Daryl wasn't as strong as it was. But that's a topic for a later video. <laughs> we are going to start off with the highlights with the Greensburg, Kansas tornado. No strongest tornado list would be complete without the first ever EF5, estimated to have had wind speeds of 201 to 210 miles per hour, more roughly 205. That is 323 to 338 kilometers per hour. It was determined that seven homes were, de were destroyed at EF5 strength, with one of those being seen right down here in at the bottom middle, that being an example from Greensburg itself, with more than 170 homes destroyed at EF4 strength. That is a very, very large amount of homes that's a very very wide stretch of damage for a very large portion throughout of town 
The Greensburg High School also suffered EF4 damage, and as you can see in the neighborhood picture here in the upper right, there was some pretty severe ground scouring. This tornado moved this steel beam that weighed 4,500 kilos, that is more than 9,000 pounds, from one part of the hospital roof to another. This was determined to be EF3 strength, which I'm not saying I doubt Tim Marshall, but I would... My guess would be that would be like something like EF4, but again, I'm going to trust Tim Marshall's opinion over over my own. I'm going to trust his uh, determination. Note that the Greensburg tornado was only EF5 for a relatively short time throughout its life, and when it was, it was at the very end of its life. This was part of a tornado family as well. This is only tornado, like, what, four or five, I believe, out of, I think, 13 total? So this was an extremely cyclic supercell, which means, which is also a kind of a good and bad thing. It shows that the supercell isn't able to wholly sustain itself for a long period of time, but it also shows that there is a very conducive environment for tornadoes, such as it becoming EF5. Just the next year, in May 2008, the Parkersburg, Iowa EF5 would happen. Note that this tornado had EF5 indicators very early on in its life, uh, estimated be well before 10 minutes before, uh, sorry, after its formation, not before. This is uh, seen on the ArcGIS uh, website, where if you uh, type in the date of, we'll say, uh, May 24th, 2008 to May 26th, 2008, you're going to get this EF5. You can zoom in on that track, click on the triangles, and you can see that there is some purple uh, triangles pretty early in its lifespan. Steel beams, such as this one here in the top right, were sheared and even twisted at the very base. That is crazy. Rebar support in one home's foundation would be snapped, so a typical home foundation is going to be uh, steel-reinforced concrete to make it even stronger, help it resist against uh, cracking and snapping, and that's what happened. This is just winds doing that. There's no construction equipment doing this. There's no jackhammers doing this. It is just winds, maybe some impacts from debris. Concrete light poles, as we can see here, were completely snapped, were dragged along the ground, and then were, of course, you know, just kept there on the ground, and they gathered some debris for fine measure. It was found that 17 homes suffered EF5 damage, being completely obliterated, and 96 homes suffered EF4 damage. Also, the Parkersburg Community High School suffered EF4 damage as well. Although, keep in mind that these are, of course, much bigger structures, just much more open spaces. Open space, the bigger the open space, the less structural integrity you're generally going to have against winds. You also have more area on the outside walls for winds to push on. So, there is that too, but still, EF4 damage. This thing granulated debris and threw up so much soil that up to three centimeter thick deposition of fine debris was found in numerous places, such as here on this pole. Uh, it nearly matching the color of the pole here, but it's still hopefully visible there. That means that this tornado was either just so powerful that it was just essentially taking everything apart from everything piece by piece, Debris was smashing into debris, which is most likely the case, and also the ground scouring dirt. So the dirt that's now in the air was just being deposited onto everything. We saw that with the uh, Tanner Alabama F5 with clay consistency soil being splattered all across homes and everywhere as well. Speaking of a tornado in, uh, in the south, the Philadelphia, Mississippi EF5 was the first EF5 of the 2011 Super, estimated to have reached wind speeds of 205 miles per hour, that is 330 kilometers per hour. It was found that it destroyed two brick homes completely, which is very hard for a tornado to do. I know I just mentioned exterior walls, but you know the stronger those walls are, the harder time winds are gonna have tearing it down, obviously. We have all read The Big Bad Wolf and The Three Little Piggies, yeah. 
Uh, there was also severe dirt and pavement scouring, some pavement scouring seen right here, although it's... I have horrible depth perception in photos at least, so I couldn't tell you how, how thick that pavement is. There does seem to be a little bit of structural integrity issues around it, so that might have led to that as well, but I digress. Still very impressive. This tornado produced the infamous two feet deep ground scouring. There's an infamous photo of it on Wikipedia. Here is another angle of that same area in the bottom middle. A mobile home was found to be a completely annihilated in midair. That being that they knew where the mobile home originated from and they knew where it ended at. And so they looked along the path, you know, trying to see if there is any notable impact uh, scars on the ground that would more or less match the frame or anything like that of the mobile home and they didn't find any. What most likely is the case here is that uh, debris inside of their tornado just completely shredded this thing, possibly ripping it from, possibly ripping the frame from the body, pardon me, which is very, very impressive, debris or not. Completely an utter destruction of vehicles. Just, I, I cannot tell what this vehicle was other than it was red and that, and that it had a roof. And it, it, it was a car, I know that, and it was red. Multiple examples of this were found throughout the tornado's path. It is very hard to destroy the frame of a vehicle. However, we have seen this multiple times with many violent tornadoes. That is crazy. This was the first F5 in Mississippi since 1966, since that Candlestick Park F5. Rather, I shouldn't say F5, I should say highest echelon tornado. Y'all you, you, get what I mean. Alright, our last bad boy here is the Smithville EF5, happening on the same day as the Philadelphia tornado. This tornado was a very fast moving, around 40 to 50 miles per hour forward speed, yet it obliterated multiple well-built homes, as we can see in these two first photos here. With damage equal to that of Gerald. Go figure, yet this thing was very fast moving. That's crazy. Cinder blocks were completely just hurled and of course then destroyed by this tornado. One brick home's foundation slabs were found to be partially dislodged. The, this thing dug up some severe amounts of dirt and even stripped some asphalt. We can see that down here in the bottom parts of this bottom right image. And of course, the dirt scouring scene here on the, on the left. It was found that furniture, appliances, plumbing, everything was just completely shredded. So this thing granulated debris. Again, that being either from it just tearing everything apart piece by piece or debris impacting other debris, causing it just become so fine. Due to this thing being so fast moving, rather than being um, more stationary, this thing caused wind rowing, which we can vaguely see in these two photos. Essentially, instead of your house, I described this last video, but I will hear it as well. Instead of your house being up behind you, you know, in front of you, to, the, to your left, to your right, to your, you know, seven o'clock, wherever, it is all in front of you throughout a more for a more or less curved little path for like half a mile. So now you know where your house is now, but you still don't have a house. So what did we see from these four tornadoes? We saw that two happened in both April and May. Again, so we are stuck at a tie once more with four tornadoes happening in both April and May. We saw that from these four extremely violent monsters, there is only 49 deaths However, this is still 49 too many and 304 people injured with $376.5 million in damage done. Granted, this is not adjusting for each of those years' uh, inflation compared to today's U.S. dollar, that being 2024. So 2006, or sorry, 2007 USD is different from 2011 USD, which is different from 2024 USD. And I didn't properly adjust it, so that's my bad there. Probably closer to the 400 million mark, possibly even exceeding that, if I had to guess there. 
that, folks, is all that I have for part two here. Part three will be the next video here. I sure hope that you learned something from this video. I certainly did while researching it. I hope to see you all in the next one. Thank you all so much for watching.